This is the theories of development. Before we jump into each developmental stage of what it means for us to be human, we must first explore the variety of theories of development. This framework enables us to organize a large amount of facts so that we can understand them. The theories also try to provide a guide for us to figure out things for ourselves. The newer theories seek to explain the development in more culturally sensitive ways, paying more attention to gender differences and ethical, ethnic, and cultural uniqueness. Remember, many of these theories were developed by a specific type of researcher a long, long time ago and didn't give a lot of credit to women's development or how one's culture played in their role of development. The newer theories attempt to fix that. The first theories we are introduced to are called psychoanalytic theories. Sigmund Freud was the originator of this theory and he felt that personality development involves a series of psychosexual stages where each stage poses a unique conflict that the individual must resolve before passing on to the next stage. Eric Erickson was another psychoanalytic theorist who came after Freud, and he felt that our crisis wasn't so much psychosexual, but it was more psychosocial. We are faced with a major task in our lives, and we must go through it in a healthy way to get to the next task. Carol Gilligan was a theorist who proposed that female identities are rooted in connections with others and in relationships, not so much on the stage theories like Freud or Erickson. Behavioral theories were next, bringing theorists like John Watson and B.F. Skinner. They believed that psychology was more a science, and therefore the data had to be observed and measured. It wasn't so much about what happens on the inside, like in psychoanalysis, but they believed that people learn to behave in certain ways. We respond to stimuli in our environment, and that stimuli shapes our behavior. It either causes it to go away or to repeat. They look at reinforcement and punish punishment as ways to do this. Humanistic theories believe that human beings are different from all, of, all other organisms and that we make an active intervention in the course of our own events and that we can control our own destinies and that we shape our own world. The cognitive perspective explores the mental representations we create through sensation, reasoning, thinking, and memory. Jean Piaget is the most popular theorist of this time because he studied how children grow and adjust to their world. He said that we go through progressive stages of cognitive development. The other main theorist of, theorist of this time was Lev Vygotsky, and his theory is more socio-cultural. He said that we should focus on the interaction between the individual and others in a social activity, and then we build off those, those interactions and move on to others. The final theory that we need to know about is called the ecological theory, and this is by Yuri Broffenbrenner. This theory centers on relationships between the developing individual and the expanding levels of this ever-changing environment that we are in, from our home to from our home and family to the broader context of our of our culture. And there are lots of different and difficult concepts for us to grasp in this section. You may find your, yourself thinking that these th the, some of these theories are just way too far fetched for you. You don't want to put any stock into them. And then there are others that you think, wow, this really makes sense. I can see myself in this theory. Regardless, remember that when we begin exploring all of these functional levels of development from each age range, you have to decide which theory is best for you.